You know, we can't ignore the Mets. Mets just keep winning. Uh, they don't like Sox, obviously, because they've won six in a row against Sox. First the White Sox and the Red Sox. Uh, and it all started on the West Coast, too. So uh, it's just an incredible run. It's the longest winning streak of any team in baseball right now. But unfortunately for the Mets, every team that they're chasing also won. But you can't feel bad about that, right? Because if you'd lost, you'd be a game and a half out rather than right. a half a game out. So they're just keeping pace, and you're hoping that somebody falters before um, be, before you falter and that your wins get you past them, give you a little breathing room. It, it, it's a, it was a duplicate of game two of the series where you kind of felt like, or at least I did, that th- this is going to be a very difficult game to win. You get the Grand Slam home run to start the game from Winker, and then you immediately give it up, and it's a 4-3 game, and it stays that way forever. And, you know, McGill couldn't give you more than 4-plus. Than so you're in your bullpen in the fifth inning, and you're dodging um, opportunity after opportunity. It was the first time since 1966, Michael, that there were three consecutive innings that ended in a double play with three different pitchers. <laughs> like So each pitcher got out of an inning because of a double play, three straight innings. They, they survive it. And then just like on, on Tuesday, Michael, the opposition's bullpen implodes. The Red Sox couldn't get a strike with the bases loaded, and the Mets get a bunch of tack-on runs. They bring in Diaz in the non-save situation because he hasn't pitched in a couple of days. And with a day off today, I guess they didn't want him to get rusty. And he mows him down in the ninth inning, and then the Mets have now won seven in a row. And Howie Rose brought out this statistic on Twitter today, Michael. I don't know if you saw it. I want to punch it up. Since June 3rd. The Mets have played 81 games, and in that 81-game span, which is exactly half the season, they are 52-29, and which would be on pace for 104 wins. So if you think 81's enough of a sample size... How can it not be? ...that this is one of the best teams in baseball right now. How about this, Don? Let's not even go to best teams in baseball. Maybe. Let's just go with this. There are two teams that play in this town last time I checked. One team is a good baseball team. That team is the New York Mets. The Yankees are a bad baseball team. With they're a bad baseball team with three good players. Well, 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 that's that's basically it, Michael. Is this a crazy thing to say at this point? At what point do you go? This is a pretty bad team that essentially overachieved in the first half of the season, has two absolute studs in the middle of their lineup, one ace who's now sort of finding himself, and besides that, just kind of a middling nothing baseball team. Well, I don't know. You you can't erase the first seventy games. I mean, I, I have stats too. So the the first seventy games they were forty nine and twenty one, which is mm-hmm. great. So now they played one hundred and forty games. So it's perfectly split. The last seventy games they're thirty one and thirty nine. Yeah. So will the real Yankees really stand up? I, I don't think that you discount the first seventy and the fact that no one in the American League is running well, away with it. The Orioles, this, who are losing four to one to the White Sox right but now. The Orioles. It doesn't matter what the Orioles do. The Yankees no, aren't going to beat anyone. But they're just it does matter win. because everybody has flaws, Peter. If the Orioles lose this yeah, game, the Orioles, still but, but, early. The Orioles, but the Orioles aren't going to go anywhere either. These are these teams are both going to be watching well, then the who's ALCS. Going? Who's going? Uh, is it going to be the Guardians? Is it going to be the Royals? The Twins? I mean, the, the Astros? Who's, but, uh, tell, well, by the way, if you're going to give me just random choices of teams, yeah, I'll probably say the Astros. Yeah, give me, nah, give I would probably team. too. Uh, give me just a team that perpetually finds a way to win in the postseason. And I listen, I'm not saying you completely say the first half of the season didn't matter. And I'll ask this question to Yankees fans. Does it matter, though, what they were in the first half? Yeah, it does because Why? you don't give them back. I don't, you don't get those is, wins back. But this is where we are. We're gonna, but we're gonna, they're gonna be yeah, but, the team they are when the playoffs starts. Who are you when the playoffs start? No, but but the the reason the Mets are on the outside looking in for the playoffs is because of their poor start. Exactly. The reason the Yankees are in the playoffs is because of their great start. Yeah. However, this sport has shown you recently. It's how you're playing once you get to the playoffs that's going to ultimately determine whether you win the championship. By, by the it. way, let me just interrupt. I, I'm watching a replay on the Chicago station. The Orioles I, are off today. I, I apologize. I, 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 was, I was looking to see that yeah. for two reasons. Number one, I thought the Orioles were off today. Right. And that is that was eerily similar to the state that they were in yesterday. I so apologize. When, when you said did listen, replay sometimes is gonna is gonna screw you up. So, but, but Don, so, your but, points your points well said. Of course, Michael, you can't give those games back. And that'll be the reason you get to the playoffs. And I am being a little bit of Anthony Pusick Debbie Downer here. But I'm just being realistic from what I've been seeing. 
Should they end up finding a way to get to the dance, they're not going anywhere. But they're you can't not, say that. I'm going to give can. you a perfect reason why. Th the Texas Rangers good. are the defending world champions, right? Okay. In the in the final 17 games of the season last year, they were 4 and 13 and they lost the division and they snuck in as a wild card. You can't say right, that. But, 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 what were they what were they over the final 50? Yeah, see that see that's the that's I'll, the I'll give you 13. I mean, you look I, mean, I could throw out the uh the 2000 Yankees, who were miserable in September, almost blew it and didn't make the playoffs and still went out there and won the World Series. But, you know, that was a team with a pedigree. They were able to get off the mat. Yes, yeah, 17 games is a decent sample size, but we're talking about a Yankee team that has not has been played average baseball since June. No, no it's been below. So, yeah, yeah, below, below average baseball. So I think that you want to – and they, and listen, they still can. Well, they got 22 games left, so maybe they're able to find some mojo and kind of change the narrative. But, like, right now, this has been about a sport that, like, how are you going into the playoffs? Yeah, you might slip like Texas did. The final 17 didn't play well. But this is a long enough sample size for both of these teams where you, you could feel a certain way about the Mets because it's been now 81 games in which they played lights-out baseball, thinking this is truly who they are. And now the Yankees, you can. That's enough of a sample where they play below uh, 500 baseball, Michael. Where, where you're talking about 70 games, 31 and 39. That's awful. Or 80 games. Where I where I say, you know what? I think this is an average baseball team. So you go by the sample sizes. They are going to make the playoffs because of the hot start. And if the Mets miss, it's going to be because of their slow start. But right now, I mean, who you feel good about? Who do you think's capable of making a run? If this continues throughout the rest of September. Uh, Peter, Mike, Peter's right. You're not going to feel good about moment, the Yankees' chances. I just mean at this moment, Michael. I'm not ruling out that it, it, you're right. Anything can happen. And the season's so long, guys. Maybe in a couple of weeks. What do, we, what do they have? 21 games left? Whatever it 20 is. 20 games. Maybe in a couple of weeks left, we feel different. Uh, no, 22 games. But yeah. at this moment in time, as I sit and live and breathe, thank God, on September 5th, 2024, the good team in this town is the New York Mets. That, well, that, that's that's what's happening right now. It, it, it's hard. It, I'm, 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 it's hard for me to argue with you. The Yankees are not playing well. If you watch yesterday's game, they played uninspired. Uh, they looked like they were sleepwalking. Soto allowed Wyatt Langford to go to second on a double, and he, he didn't even have any urgency whatsoever. Um, it, it, it's ter They're playing terrible baseball. Now, I did come to a conclusion, guys, and I'm going to run it by you right here on the air. All right. So um, there are people that uh, do radio and television columns in the city that they want you to constantly bring up, constantly bring up when somebody doesn't run hard to first base. Why is that allowed? Why don't they point that out? And I do a good deal of the time. So yesterday, Verdugo hits a ground ball to second base. And he essentially walks to first base and is out by 35 feet. And I said to David, that can't be. You can't do that. You're in the middle of a pennant race. You're not playing well. You can't jog to first base. Now, I give Meredith credit. On the post-game show, she asked Boone. I have no problem with it. You know what? I wipe my hands. I wipe my hands of it. So, Phil Mustick, if you don't like the fact that I don't point it out all the time, get over it. The manager doesn't care. The manager was asked about it and doesn't care. So what do you want but, me to do? It's not for me to bring it up constantly. But, it's right. right out there for everybody to see. But, I said it. I don't know if you watched the game, Don. I said yeah. you cannot play the I game like it. that. And then Boone said, well, he's a little banged up. And, you know, he runs hard when he has to. How do you know when it's, it's, it's the right time to run hard? What if you're busting it to first base and the guy at second hurries it and then throws it away and you get on base? There's no good time to just lollygag. And, 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 but the, the managers don't care. Uh, but, but is it they don't care or is it this whole just a lack of accountability? I can't call out players. Well, whatever it is. Yeah, whatever it is. So what, is it my job to consistently no, hammer no. it home on the air? No. no you, listen, Michael, you did your job. Who cares about, about what they're going to write? Let him write what he's going to write. You, you did a great job calling it out. And the fact is, is that it, it became a, a topic of conversation. You called it out. Meredith asked the question, and the answer is always the same. Oh, he's banged up, or I don't care, or, you know, he'd give more of an effort if there was no doubt about, it wasn't a no doubt about a ground out. But there's got to be that level of accountability. Let's go back to earlier in the week. They made the decision that Verdugo is going to landlock the Martian from getting called up right now because of the way that he's hitting. And they backed him up. And, that, and that's what you get for getting backed up? 
getting a chance to play when the world seems to believe that somebody else should be playing left field instead of you? And also, that's the way you honor the decision Verdugo. of the organization? Yeah, is to jake it down from the first base line? That's garbage, Michael. That's pure garbage. Well, and that's he, something you should be called he, out for. Here's what I thought of, too. He banged up, then call up Dominguez. See, He's not banged up. I, you know, you know, and, and you say that they'll run through a wall for Aaron Boone because he's got their back. But, you know, sometimes it works the other way, Michael. When somebody always has your back, then sometimes the human instinct is to take advantage of that and not run through the wall because he's not asking you to do that because he's always going to have your back. This is a team that feels stale. And maybe if Dominguez was called up here, he'd play with his hair on fire because he is a kid and he's looking to impress. And maybe that could wake this team up. All right, but they decided not to do that. And how does Verdugo honor that? By not busting it down the first baseline. And enough with always red hot. Michael, he's a singles hitter over that 10-game span. He's got, like, one extra base hit in this time that he's supposed to be so hot they couldn't call up Dominguez. So... That's what's frustrating to fans is that that's the effort that you're given after you're given the opportunity to be on this Yankee team in September and help them try to win this division. That's that's not that's not a great look. And then mm. there was no urgency in the locker room afterward. You know, you asked Marcus Stroman, who gave you three and two third innings. I'm not going to jump him because you know what? He's pitched well the last four games. Everybody's going to have a clinker. You're not going to be you're not going to be great all the time. You know and what he said? You know what? Great. We have a process. We're, we're all very confident in our process. Your process has you 31 and 39 in the last 70 games. Wait, I mean, the who, process. Whose answer stop was that? It. Whose answer was that? That was Strowman. Nobody's I mean, panicking here. We trust in our process, the way we go about things. We'll be fine. It, it, we keep acknowledge- being fine, but you're 31 and 39. Hold on. here, let me, Real quick, here is to Strowman. Uh, what went wrong out there? I just don't think I executed when I needed to. They got me some long counts, and then I felt like they were able to just put the barrel on balls. And, yeah, later in those counts, just feel like I wasn't executing. I, 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 honestly, how do you guys watch this sport? I, I can't even take it. Why can't people just say I got knocked around? Are you kidding me? I, I, everything is such a long end. Well, late in counts, you know, bat on ball. You got knocked around. You gave up nine hits and three two-thirds. It's a bad outing. That's it. Can't people just say I was bad tonight? Bad tonight. And if once in a while you say we stink and things happen, right. then then when you do say I believe in this team, it'll mean something All, because you at least called them out at the times that's, it was bad. That's the thing. This team is like, for the last several years, they are the most rambling bunch of like, with the exception, I'll say this, Judge, at least at several points, has been more direct. But God, it's such a common theme that they can never just say we stink. Today was a bad night. Let's let's try to do better. You don't have to say you're panicking. I'm not saying Don, your hair has to be on fire, but like, it's just such so, so much verbal vomit on this. Now, team. now one other thing that we're not bringing up. There are 28 guys on that team. So if Boone wants to be, I'm fine with him not running. The other guy shouldn't be. Why isn't he pulled aside and go? No, no, no. We we we're in the home stretch here. So if he can run hard. And beating out a double play, then he's not that banged up. He should run hard all the time. Anthony Volpe runs hard all the time. Aaron Judge runs hard all the time. Now, Stanton can't run. So I never, ever judge that he's not running hard. He can't run. I know that. But how come some guys could? You don't think that Judge is exhausted? He's 6'7", 282 pounds. He's played almost every single inning of every game. He runs hard all the time. I mean, it's just, a, even Boone said, I know it's a bad look. Well, if it's a bad look, then it shouldn't happen. And if he's that banged up, then call well, up a guy who's not banged up. But when everything is 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 great and we're we're putting barrel on bat and all the all the vernacular that gets thrown out there that's way over our heads, but we can sense that you're still being positive. And I understand that he got the job, Michael, because they want that positivity. But eventually, it falls on deaf ears if because it doesn't feel like you can't possibly think everything's okay if you're 31 and 39. And also, one other thing that we should bring up the only guy that was held accountable the only one was glaber torres right right and we said at the time that that was the right thing to do and what's happened since you held him accountable he's played great maybe it was a little bit of a wake-up call but he's the only guy why is he the only guy when there are guys that don't run hard to first base all the time. He's the only guy that was called out on it. He got benched, and he's been red hot ever since. Coincidence? 
No, it's accountability. When people feel like that somebody's watching and then somebody's grading and that your time on the field and your at-bats are going to be dictated by how you play, then there's going to be a different attitude. But if you feel like, I'm okay, my manager believes in me, everything's okay, then then people are going to start to believe that, yeah, everything is okay. It's the, I, I don't think that they're always – panic is not always a good thing, Michael, but sometimes – there, it's it's essential well, how to about get things urgency? turned around. How about or, or at least a sense of urgency. Losing two out of three to Washington, St. Louis, and Texas. This was supposed to be where they got well. And they're fortunate that Baltimore, you know, they lost last night, believe it or not, to the worst team in the history of baseball. So you caught a break there. But you got to be looking yourself in the mirror. And how many times are you going to tell everybody everything that Kevin Bacon and Animal House all is well? Eventually, people are just going to be like, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about, or he's just completely ignoring what's happening out there. Because 31 and 39, losing three consecutive series to average or below average baseball teams in the middle of a pennant race, and now you have been below average since June 1st, which is a huge sample size, making people believe that that start was a fluke. And oh, by the way, no home runs for Judge over the last nine games. They're three and six. Is that a coincidence? That now all of a sudden Judge isn't hitting home runs, and now this team isn't winning? accentuating how maybe their offense is just about two guys and nobody else. So there's a lot of things that have to get fixed here. They've got 22 games to do it. But, Michael, there's got to be some sense of urgency in that room instead of telling you everything's fine when the entire world knows it's not. Yeah, the the, the whole thing, it, it, it just got me yesterday with the answer to the Verdugo question. It just did. Oh, he's banged up. Everybody's banged up. It's September 5th. I'm banged up. It's a long season. That's that's the grind of a baseball season. If you're not good enough to play, then don't play. And he's had two doubles since the middle of August. He's a doubles machine. So it's not like you can't take him out of the lineup because he's contributing so much. He has two doubles, as Don said, or it might have been Peter or Don. He's a singles hitter. And he's not running hard to first base. How does that look? Now, this is an interesting development, too. All right. Um, I think you'll love this, Peter. And I think you'll you'll actually join in as well. Okay. Uh, so there's this guy, J-Rock, on, on Twitter. Oh, yeah, I mm -hmm. love J-Rock. So he's advocating for people to be fired. He goes, not just Boone. Yeah, he's need to fire Cashman and everyone at the Yes Network who's been gaslighting the fans into believing all this BS. Michael K is the number one at gaslighting Yankee fans. J-Rock, come get me. Get me fired. Get me fired. Me, the big gaslighter. Get me fired. Well, are you such a simpleton that you allow yourself to be gaslit? I'm not gaslighting anybody. I speak the truth. Nobody tells me what to say. You think the Yankees like that I'm ripping Alex Verdugo right now? Go away, little boy. You're annoying. They're gaslighting fans. No, because you guys have something in your mind, and we're speaking our truths, and you don't like it. Worry about gaslighting in politics. Don't worry about gaslighting at the Yes Network. We don't do any gaslighting. We tell the truth. Nobody tells us what to say. Gaslighting. What a fool. Silly little boy. <laughs> silly little boy. I've never seen, I've never heard this from you, silly little boy. Oh, I, uh, let's fire Michael because he's been there. He's the number one guy gaslighting Yankee fans. Oh, 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 I'm gaslighting you. Well, how do you, you gaslight how? You're saying everything's fine and nothing needs to change? Like, what would be gaslighting? People overuse that. It's one, another one of those terms. No one had used the term gaslighting until 2019. Now it's in every conversation. But th that would mean people are saying they have a reason to be upset and you're going, no, you don't. There's nothing to worry about at all. But you don't do that. Amazing. Those are Diamond Notes brought to you by London Jewelers. Visit London Jewelers today at any of their seven locations, including the Americana Mall and the Mall at Short Hills. All right, let's let's uh, let's take some phone calls. We'll start with Bobby in Arizona. Bobby. Hey, Michael, Don, Peter, great show. Hey, I want to piggyback what you guys were talking about over there. I watch every game, and I saw last night, Michael, and you definitely got on Verdugo about not running. I watched the post-game show, and I hear Boone saying, well, you know, I have no problem with that. He's, he's beat up. I thought the exact same thing that Dominguez should be up at the roster right now and ready to play tomorrow in, in Chicago. And, and, and Peter, you, I'm sorry, uh, Don Hughes also said that there's no accountability. I agree with that. That's gone on since Boone's been the manager. There's no accountability. If that's what the Yankees want, then that's fine. But the players, you can see in their play and their attitudes of no accountability. I just think that's wrong. I'll hang up and listen to what you guys have to say. Thank you for taking my call. All right. Thank you, Bobby. I mean, again, 
Glaber was held accountable. The last high-ranking Yankee front office person that was held accountable was Joe Girardi. He got the team to the seventh game of the ALCS. He was held accountable. He lost his job. So people do get held accountable. I guess it's, it's pick and well, choose. Glaber Torres yeah. was punished and embarrassed in front of the world, but it's okay to Alex Verdugo because Glaber Torres is banged up too, I'm sure. I, I know you're supposed to be a good team. Your payroll says that you're supposed to be a good team. And the back of the baseball cards on a lot of these players say that they should be better than they are. But, Michael, enough games pile up where you say we're not. We're not what we thought we were. So stop so stop acting like you're still one of the best teams in baseball. I know that they are right there and can still win this division based on the start that they had. But you accumulate enough games, Michael, where you're playing below average baseball. Isn't that when that becomes who you are and that you're fortunate to be in the situation that you're in? But then realize that we can't continue in this direction. So stop saying we're still a good team. We're, we're going to break out of it. Those are just words. They don't have any meaning. Uh, you, do you actually believe that, or are you just hoping? Does, does Aaron Boone believe it, Michael, or is he just hoping? He's hoping that April and May reappear in this team. Well, I mean, I think he's genuinely a positive guy. I think he believes it. Well, then he's delusional, Michael, because even the most positive person, are you being positive because that's your nature, or are you seeing something we don't see? And, and Michael, I, I'm not ever going to claim that I know as much baseball as Aaron Boone or that you do or that Peter does or the fans do. But, Michael, this goes beyond just a bunch of hot Yankee fans that are upset about their team. I mean, look at it, Michael. The schedule doesn't lie. The Bill Parcells, you are where your record says you are. So I guess their record of 20 games above 500 tells you that they're a really good team. But over the last 80 games, it tells you they're a below-average team. And those are the most recent 80 games. And it happened in 2022. We waited for this team to wake up in 2022, Michael. It never happened. It, they never woke up last year. So is, isn't the last three years telling you that maybe when they are good, it's a mirage, and when they're average, that's actually what they are? Because the sample size tells you that they've been average a lot more than they've been great. Yeah, but it, it's, it, it's the exact same amount of games. They were great for 70, and they've been below average for 70. So you're choosing the, the most recent sample size. It's not like they were great for 40 games and they've been bad for 120. It's 70 okay. and 70. They were okay. 28 games over, and now they're 8 games on. Well, first of all, it, you're always going to go with the most recent because that's what you are right now. Mm -hmm. All right, that's number one. Number two, I know there were injuries, Michael, but you were slightly above average all of last year for 162 games. And then the year before, you kind of fell off the map and, and were able to survive and win the division based on your great start to 2022. But you were very average that half of the season. So if I look at the last three years in totality, Michael, hasn't there been more average than great? Well, last year was, was, I mean, in Brian Cashman's world, it was a disaster. So that's right. 82 and 80. That's the definition of average. Right. The year before, they they made the playoffs. Yes, I, and, and, uh, thanks to a great first half, but, but a they, very but average all, second half. But didn't uh, uh, the years run um, together, didn't they go to the ALCS? They went to the ALCS because they had a really good first half. Right, so it could happen again. And then, uh, yeah. The one thing I disagree with what Peter said, I'm not right, well, if they get into the playoffs, there's not a great team. I, I get it, Michael, but even in 2022, you, you, you beat the Guardians and then you got swept by the Astros. I know that there are injuries, but every team has injuries. So it's not like you know they were able to parlay that great start in 2022 to winning a championship. They, they didn't win a game in the league championship series. Last year, they didn't make the playoffs. I agree with you. There are no great great teams, but that you can't worry about everybody else. And plus, right now, the way the Astros have played in the second half of the season, they seem to be a lot better. And that's a team that's had your number when they have been good. And you're going to probably have to get through them. So, I mean, it, it's not really helpful to say, well, the rest of the league's average. Well, you're average, too. So, yeah, you might be able to make a run, but you might also go out early, well, but like you have in the last few I, years. I have said this for the last month. I wouldn't be surprised if they win the World Series. I wouldn't be surprised if they got knocked out in the wild card. Right, but, That's but be, the type of team they right, have. But be honest, Michael. You, you I, 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 Watching this team, you wouldn't be surprised if they won the World Series? No. I no. would be surprised. Because they have, they have, I think, three good starting pitchers. You hope that they can figure out the bullpen. And they have two exceptional hitters. Right. But they have no closer. 
and they don't seem to have any kind of consistent offense outside of Soto and Judge. And, and, and I think that's, that could really hurt them. Oh, listen, I, I'm not, would I be flabbergasted? I mean, things happen. Who had the Diamondbacks in the World Series last year? But the way that they're playing right now, Michael, I, I would lean towards surprised if they won the World Series <laughs> than not. 